Welcome guys to my ranking of the Oceans movies from worst to best. I've had this planned since Oceans 8 has came out and I've written down the ranking and I have the ranking fresh in my head. So we're going to rank all five movies. If you haven't seen any of these movies, go watch them and watch my reviews of them. Here we go. This is how I rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. Try not to argue with me in the comments. Let's have a friendly discussion as always. And I respect your opinion if you don't like any of them. So, let's get started. No Rotten Tomatoes things this time. But we do have Stardust reactions. So, let's go. At number 5 for me, it is Ocean's 11 from 1960. Now, I do like this one. But like I said... There were some things that I didn't really care for in particular. I felt like some stuff was a little bit eh. And I felt like that it didn't really gave me that feeling as it did with the George Clooney ones. But I did enjoy this one for being its own thing. And this is with the Rat Pack. I enjoyed this one. I had entertainment factor with this one, and I thought it was fairly entertaining. And I do enjoy what they were trying to do with this one. And But the reason why this is my least favorite is because the 2001 version is the better version of this movie. I respect the 1960s version, but Steven Soderbergh's version is always going to be the main one out of the two Ocean's Eleven ones. But still fun time. F number four, we have Ocean's 13. Ocean's 13, this is my least favorite of the Soderbergh trilogy, but I will s simply sit here and say it's not because Catherine Sarah Jones and Julia Roberts isn't in it. I like the explanation about it. I thought Al Pacino was pretty good. As the, I thought one villain I didn't really care too much for, but... I like the story here. I like seeing all the male actors back. It has that punch. So it has that punch as the first two in the trilogy. And I think that it's a fairly entertaining film. And I think that it has some very interesting things that they decide to go with. And I felt like that they really did what they wanted to do here with this one. They closed out the Soderbergh trilogy with a bang and a whimper. I do have my my main problems with the movie if you've seen my review, but I will simply say that Ocean's 13 was a good time. Ocean's 13 has to be my least favorite of the trilogy. Not because Catherine Zara Jones and Julie Roberts is not in it. That explanation was pretty cool. It's just something that doesn't feel quite right for it, but it is pretty entertaining into the, the trilogy. I just wish that there are some things in this movie that could have been done a lot better. Coming at no third place is Ocean's 8. Yep. This is not another Ghostbusters. Now, my problem with the film is basically by the books, playing it safe. And I feel like you could have done a lot more and play it safe at the same time. But for what we got, it was a better female-driven movie than what Ghostbusters 2016 was. This movie doesn't insult men. It doesn't disrespect men. And it doesn't m m piss me off as much as Ghostbusters 2016 did. This one I thought was very good. I like Gary Ross's direction. I like the writing here. I love the female cast from Sandra Bullock to Anne Hathaway to gorgeous Kate Blanchett to Aquafina to Rihanna to Helena Bonham Carter to Sarah Paulson to Mandy Kaelin. I thought they all worked very well with each other. I do wish Rihanna and Aquafina had more to do. I really do love the cameos by Adriana Lima and Matt Damon and Gigi Hadid and Olivia Munn, of course. I do love the cameos here. Sadly, this didn't do too well at the box office, but but it was a better movie than Ghostbusters. And 
uh, people ju- who don't like the movie, ju- if you don't like the movie, at least you, some people is gonna have to, should admit it was better than Ghostbusters 2016 because that movie was insulting and it pissed me off. This movie doesn't piss me off. Coming in second place is Ocean's Eleven 2001. A great start to the series with Steven Soderbergh's films. George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Bernie Mac, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Don Cheadle, Andy Garcia. Everyone was great in this one. I really dug the story more here. I like this modernized version better than 1960s version. And I really like the story here. My only problems with the film, and the reason why it's not my number one, is because I do feel like it gets a little slow paced. It's, but I appreciate the fact it takes its time to introduce what is going to be a very fun film and some likable characters and some pretty entertaining, hilarious moments. is pretty, and the heist scene is a very awesome sequence. It's a lot of fun to be had in that scene, and I think that scene is really cool, and I think it's very entertaining, and it's pretty, it's pretty fun, it's a pretty fun movie, directed by Steven Soderbergh, shot very well, edited very well, with good music, and a good score, and good cast that works phenomenally with each other, and this is why, and you can totally see why this movie is loved. Ocean's Eleven is a great start to the George Clooney Soderbergh directed trilogy. Love the chemistry between the cast. It's an interesting story. Very funny jokes. It's a very awesome concept. This was a better movie than the Rat Pack version, and I do like the Rat Pack version, but I prefer the Clooney ones way more. But at number one, for me, is Ocean's 12. This is the black sheep of the series to me. This one gets overlooked. I know a lot of people don't like this one, but I enjoy this one. This is more of a calm movie. My only problem here is that it's not really much happening. But if you're not a fan of talking movies, you're not going to really like this one. I, I like this one. It's more of a calm movie. It's more of a peaceful movie. I prefer story over action, and I prefer substance over style. There will be times where I prefer action over story or style over substance, but not this case. I really like the cast of returning players once again. I also really enjoyed Robbie Coltrane's character here. I liked Catherine Zeta-Jones in this movie as the, the girlfriend of Brad Pitt. I also really enjoyed the cameo from Bruce Willis. That was pretty fun. A lot of funny moments here. Still has a little issue of some parts being slow, but it runs at a very fast pace, two hours and five minutes. It doesn't feel too boring. And Bernie Mac is easily the standout of this movie. He is pretty funny in this movie. Rest in peace, Bernie Mac. You're awesome here. You're awesome as an actor. Wish you were still here with us, but pneumonia had to take you away way too or way too early. But I really enjoy Ocean's Twelve to the best of my abilities. Some people say this is the weaker one, but Ocean's Twelve is my favorite one in the trilogy. I like the returning cast. I didn't mind Catherine Sarah Jones. I didn't mind it that it was much more of a calm movie, but it does get a little slow in the pacing into the middle of the movie. But you got the cast, you got a good climax, and you got a pretty entertaining film. So what's the problem? So that was my ranking of the Ocean's movies with Stardust Reactions. Let me know what you guys think about the Ocean's movies down below. Which one's your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? Let's have a friendly, entertaining conversation. Let's try not to be too negative about it in the comments. Because as I say in all, most of my videos, any negative comments, I will be removing them. So, just take it easy, be calm, be cool, and we ain't going to have a problem. Also, be sure to follow me on my social media links. They're all in the description down below. As well as the information of every single film. Also, follow, be sure to follow me on the Stardust app, MovieGeek1998. 
also my Future Filmmaker 3940 official group page and my fan page for the channel where I post updates and stuff on there. So, yeah. This is Future Filmmaker 3940 signing out and you guys, as always, keep it cool. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.